On this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to join two baseboards together so that you can have that perfect invisible seam that looks professional every time. Stay tuned. Welcome to Fix This House. If you're new to the channel, please consider pressing the subscribe and notification bell so you can always be in tune on DIYs, how-to videos, and product reviews that I do within this channel. Today's project, we're going to be tackling the baseboards install in my living room right behind the couch. So right now, we're going to be using their Franklin Stud Finder. So usually, I don't do this. This is I'm just doing this for instructional purposes only so I can clearly show you guys where we're going to be stapling the, uh, the baseboards right up against the wall. So as you can see that the measurement on this this wall is a very long measurement and I don't have a baseboard that supports this type of length. We're going to have to join two baseboards together to complete this length of a wall. Now the reason why I marked each one of these studs is because you have a choice of where you want to put the scarf joint or that's what you officially want, might want to call it the scarf joint or where do you want to join the two pieces together. Just pick one of the studs that is suitable best for you. We're going to butt this up to this existing baseboard. If you're new to coping, I actually made a video on how to cope. So I'll leave the link on the top right. But we need to cope this before we actually make that cut to where we want to place it. So I chose this length right here, this stud where this marker is at. Here's a little tip, friends, when you're working with MDF boards or baseboards, moldings, crown moldings or anything like that. Make sure that the blade you're using is the proper blade. This one I'm doing the ultra finish blade. It has 80 teeth, 10 inches right, just right for my craftsman blade right here. Anything from 60 to 80 teeth will probably be fine just so that you can have that nice cut. And all the tools that I use on this video, I'll leave it on the description below to make it easier for you. Also friends, I can't stress enough, make sure you use a dust mask or a respirator. So I have these baseboard pieces that are laying around just right here the various sizes since this is going to be located on behind the couch not that much people are going to see this so you want to try to use your scrap pieces on areas that are not going to get seen as much but at the same time we're still going to make it look good we're going to try to hide that seam so it's going to sit like this and it's going to butt up to the other existing baseboard that we just installed we're going to start coping this so what we're going to do we're going to move the miter saw onto the 45 degree angle right there we're going to take our baseboard and place it right against the fence and to save material you want to try to at least just nick it on the very end right there and then cut that 45 and after that we're going to cope it. We're going to flip this baseboard upside down and we're going to relieve just the portion on the end right here so that will save us time when we start coping. I just relieved a portion right there and I stopped right at the profile. Take your pencil and then just pretty much outline to where you're gonna make that cope. dry fit it and place it right up against that baseboard and you're going to find out where it lands. So as you can see this is a seven foot baseboard and you can see that it doesn't meet up to that stud so we're not going to use that stud. We're going to use the original stud that we, we meant to use. Each stud is about an inch and a half so we're just going to measure it roughly right there where the each side of the stud is and we're going to measure approximately right in the middle just to be safe and that's where we're going to land our seam. I'm going to mark that 45 degree on that direction so that I don't get confused. There you go. Now you have your 45 degree cut. We're going to install this first and then we're going to measure up the remainder piece and then I'll show you how to join each end. So the brad nailer that I'll be using today is the Nail Force Works Nitro uh, cordless battery operated 20 volt nail gun. I'll be using an 18 gauge 2 inch nail brad nails very easy to use just load it up okay right, you're locked and loaded and there's our mark 84 and three quarters right there we're going to take our miter saw and we're going to swing it over to the 45 degree mark now take your baseboard and lay it right against the fence now make sure you account for the thickness of the blade. Okay. 
So now we're going to dry fit it right up to the baseboard that we just installed and it just flushes perfectly just like that. In some instances, it's not the case. You're going to end up just a, have a lip just like this. It's because that your floor is not even all the way and it will rock back and forth. So depending on your situation, sometimes you might have to end up using the shim to make up for that level. But in most circumstances, you can just staple it and you can push down as you nail it down to the floor. Now the adhesive that I'm using today is the 2P10. I love using this because it's an instant adhesion. It's not like using wood glue. If You can use wood glue, but it does take time and you will have to wait for that dry time. But using this is automatic. Once you use this glue it, and, the, and the activator, it's about three seconds. And But if you want a little longer, you can use glue on both sides. And by using that, you will have enough time to adjust, which takes about 10 seconds but it's totally up to you you can actually do this before you actually install the baseboards and nail it to the to the wall just so that you can have it nice and perfect but for this instructional purposes only we're going to do it right onto the wall i'm going to be using this wood filler this natural wood filler by elmers i like using this because it's nice and smooth it's not as rough as the other wood filler that i used to use and you're gonna just apply with your fingers first to fill the cracks and a, tri a tip and trick that I like to use is this razor blade. I like using it as a sort of as a putty knife. A putty knife is too big that's why I like using this razor blade to make it nice and smooth and perfect. Then I like to use about 120 grit sandpaper then using a 600 grit sandpaper to do a finishing smooth touch. And then you might as well sand and fill in those ho nail holes as well. Right when you're done just wipe it down real well. And then we're going to be using this caulking. I like using this DAP Extreme Stretch because it is very flexible because your baseboard will shift over time and this will prevent cracking. Use the wet uh, rag method so that once you take off that extra uh, caulking you can just dab it onto that wet rag. Now I'm just going to be masking off this portion just for instructional purposes. Usually I'm just going to mask the whole thing and, and just um, paint the whole baseboard but for you guys i'm just going to show this portion okay all right so once you get the first coat on i like to dab it in and finish off with a roller so that i don't have those paintbrush marks now check for yourself let me know in the comment section below if you see that seam i want to challenge you and see if you could find that seam that we just fixed as far as i can i can't even find it myself so yeah, let me know if this is helpful, friends. Let me know if you found value to this. If you did, please hit that big thumbs up. Press that subscribe button and notification bell so you can always be in tune on tips and tricks as easy as this. And I'll see you next time.